My presentation is called From Welfare State to Participation Society, Uncertain Outcomes for Local Communities. The traditional Dutch welfare state changes in January 9, 2015, so next year. It changes into a participation society. The government, by mouth of the king, announced it last year as follows. Everyone who can is expected to take responsibility for his or her, her own life and environment. And this seems that uh, the civil society is going to be reinvented. I'll come back to that later. What is the welfare state in the Netherlands? Simply put, the state takes care of you from birth to grave. You receive a payment when you are unemployed or handicapped, and when you are 65 years or older, then, if necessary, you will get a room in an elderly home. What are the arguments to change the welfare state? The more or less hidden, hidden government agenda is to reduce spending and to get the government budget deficit under the uh, required by the European Union 3%. That is not the outspoken argument. The argument that is used is that the demand for health care is increasing and that we can't pay these health care costs in the future anymore. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, people are getting older and older. To illustrate that for the Netherlands, uh, the population is ar around 17 million at the moment. The number of people who are 65 and plus is in 2013 2.6 million, which is 16%. We expect that to rise up to 20% in 2020, and we expect there to be 4.5 million 65 plus people in 2040. To illustrate these um, with some ciphers, the Dutch national spending in 2015 totals 260 billion euros. 260 billion euros. For healthcare, we spent 73 billion, which is almost one third. On social security, which is payments for people who are unemployed, etc. For social security, we spent 80 billion, 80 billion, which is 31% of the total budget. On education, we spent 35 billion, which is 15%, and the Dutch municipalities, on which I'll elaborate further on, the municipalities receive 20 billion, which is 8% of the total budget. Well, this, welf this welfare state is not completely broken down. It's, it will survive after 2014, but it will, co it will exist with less growth less interference of the state, and with more society. It means that citizens have to pay more themselves, citizens have to do more themselves, and citizens have to do more for others in the field of care and voluntary work. Starting next year, the municipalities in the Netherlands play an important role in caring for their citizens. The aim is to bring the care closer to the citizens and municipalities are the closest government. But important is that government spending has to go down in order to create a smaller budget deficit. The problem is that municipalities have to do more for less money. This is all in the framework of cutting the budgets. And that puts the municipalities in a difficult position. Cities all over the country are cutting expenses at the moment. And they do that especially in the social and cultural sector. Libraries are closed, music groups are not financed anymore, and also sport associations, etc. They receive nothing anymore or less subvention from uh, the, the cities. Well, what are the tasks that these municipalities will get? Uh, 
as from next year, they have to take care of the elderly, the, especially the elderly that have uh, long lasting uh, care, the chronic sick people and handicapped people. They will be responsible for uh, youth support, and that is, youth support is a very large container uh, concept. It's, it means assisting parents who have a difficulty in upbringing their children, in protecting children, in mental health care for children, and even if children are difficult to handle, they have to uh, to be closed in uh, special institutions. All tasks of the municipalities uh, next year. And they have to assist citizens who have difficulty to enter the labor market and who are long-term unemployed. It is possible because of these various budget cuts that there will be huge differences um, within and between cities. Cities can decide themselves where to cut budgets. Most cities have budget problems. The consequence of this is that with a certain handicap or illness, it might be profitable to check whether it is sensible to move to another city because care is better organized there. But this is all very uncertain because the measures uh, are introduced uh, as of January next year. So there is a lot of money involved to sustain those uh, citizens who are not participating in the labor market. Well, who are those people? People with low educational level, non-Western ethnic minorities, especially from Morocco. These are difficult uh, to find. For these people, it's difficult to find jobs. In addition to that, we have around 400,000 people who are not able to work because of handicaps or mental illness. There are a lot of youngsters unemployed, youngsters um, under 27 years. There are 230,000. In total, there's something like two, like six or 700,000 people are unemployed. And of this group, 230,000 youngsters. Then we have a group of 400,000 people who receive assistance. Well, the total of that group is um, something more than 1 million, and that's on a population of uh, 17 million. But what are the municipalities going to do next year? The, the, the national government designs the system, and they will support the local governments, but with less money, as I mentioned. Municipalities will be responsible for care of the elderly, for chronic ill, for handicapped. How are they going to do that? They are independently formulating norms for participation in the labor process or as a volunteer, a volunteer. And they are going to decide who is capable of handling himself or who is needing extra assistance. These Local governments are also going to decide on the quality of facilities, like uh, caring institutions or educational institutions. And they also have to take care of the democratization process. Pe people are also expected to participate in policy making. So, to sum up, citizens have to be active in work. And if you don't have a job, you should do voluntary work. You have as to assist. Uh, people in caring, in first place, of course, your own family, but also neighbors. And you understand that this will cause problems because a lot of family members are living very far apart. So how are you going to take care of your, of your, uh, your parents if you are living uh, far away from them? And I... <laughs> Do you have a good relation with your neighbors so that you can expect from them to take care of you if you need the uh, support? So everyone, everyone is expected to do voluntary work. And in addition, you also have to uh, to be active in, um, in your local community by influencing policy making. And how is the situation with respect to participation? 
uh, I already mentioned how uh, many people are not participating in uh, the labor process. In total, that is roughly 1.6 million people. That is almost 10% of the total population, mind, 10%. And that is, um, say, all together, including uh, handicapped people, but also the six or 700,000 people who are unemployed. So 1.6 million people receive support from the government. Uh, with respect to voluntary work, the preparedness to do voluntary work in general is pretty large in the Netherlands. And the caring for other people is estimated to be something like three and a half million. Uh, and this group is especially composed of, uh, of women of uh, 45 years and older. With respect to influencing policy making in the Netherlands, the turnout to vote is going down. Um, and participation is uh, something that um, especially people of middle aged do, um, people with higher incomes, people with higher education, and also people who, who go to church frequently. That's the group who is active in policy making. Well, how's this participation in society realized? One, one measure is to bring the tasks from the national government to the municipalities and doing an appeal to the citizens. What the consequences are of this transition, which takes place in a very short period, it's not completely clear, but what we see at the moment is that healthcare institutions are withdrawing from the market. These are private institutions. Some of them are closing, or some are, are, are firing their, uh, their staff. A lot of municipalities are panicking. Uh, they claim that time is too short to be ready for the start in 2015. Homes for elderly and long-lasting care are closing because people are expected to stay in their own houses, in their own homes, homes uh, longer, and if necessary, with support. So various homes for elderly, they don't have um, people anymore, so they are closing. Um, the consequence of this is that the unemployment of care workers is rising. Something interesting is that we see a revival of ecclesia ecclesial charity. The churches have, by tradition, always been doing charity work. But now we see that they are more active in this uh, field. There is also, at the moment, extra pressure on voluntary organizations, we have a large one uh, nationwide, which calls itself Humanitas. They take care of people who are in difficult positions, who are uh, socially deprived, um, or who can, can't handle their own um, administration. There is extra pressure of, on this kind of voluntary organizations. We also see a process where municipalities are merging up to 100,000 municipalities, uh, uh, sorry, inhabitants, 100,000 inhabitants. And one of the reasons for that is that if you have a bigger city, uh, you can hire more qualified civil servants and you can uh, work more efficient. So this is a process which is, uh, especially in the countryside, where you have a lot of small towns, there is a process of merging of municipalities. And one of the things that we also see is different, big differences uh, between the way various municipalities handle uh, the organization of the care. Then, finally, what are the uh, Greens in the Netherlands? We call them GroenLinks, the Dutch Greens. What are they suggesting in this field of uh, this transfer from welfare state to uh, participation society. I checked uh, the program of um, a, a moderate big city, one of more than 100,000 inhabitants. They suggest, firstly, to invest in health prevention. Makes sense. 
to improve social cohesion, to skip bureaucracy in healthcare. I don't have the time to go into detail there, but it is heavily bureaucratized in Holland, the way healthcare is organized. You have to go from one uh, office to another. So GroenLinks, the Dutch Greens in, th in th uh, this big city, they suggest one household should receive one plan, should have one caretaker as a contact person and one budget instead of having to deal with various institutions. And they also say the client should have more responsibility for himself, for his own body and for his own health. They also warn that uh, the support for carers and for volunteers, that support, we should be careful because these people have limited capacity. Very often volunteers have a job, they have their own family, and they also have to do then, next year, uh, voluntary work for neighbors and for their, their family members. The Dutch Greens also suggest to use ICT for distance care and to use um, computers and, um, and social media to combat uh, loneliness. Another suggestion is to uh, create group housing for elderly, where a small group of elderly people are living together and taking care of um, themselves and others as far as that is possible. And the last thing, they uh, would like to invest in voluntary groups. Well, these points of view of uh, the Dutch Greens seem rather fake, but is, that is not uh, the fault of the political party, but that is due to the short period of time. Now my connection is... Uh, you can still hear me, okay. Um, that is not a problem uh, for, the, for the political party, but it is uh, due to the short period in which the transition is being realized. There is a lot of uncertainty with municipalities and with the agencies that have to implement these uh, changes in a very short uh, time. And to conclude, the success of this transition from welfare states to a participation society depends heavily on the flexibility of volunteers, of neighborhoods, and voluntary organizations. But if it works in 2015 and after that, it may lead to the revival of the civil society. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Ruud. Uh, can you hear me? Ruud, can you hear me? Um, we would like to thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, it's always a pleasure to listen to Dutch um, experts um, who are excellent in pragmatism I mean, for centuries. And it is quite typical of you in the Netherlands. And my friend, who I may call my friend your king, he used to be my schoolmate. Uh, in the last century, that right after his uh, accession to the Dutch throne, he promotes this idea of a post-welfare shift to uh, the participative, pa as you call, participation or participative um, model Sorry. of um, democracy. So it's it's a very tough challenge, and but you will solve it, I'm sure, because the Dutch, I mean, we keep fingers crossed. If you can solve this challenge, then we're going to be happy because we can point our fingers to our own, um, like, um, second rate or very kind of uh, provincial uh, politicians in the governing party, for instance, that there is the Netherlands who we can turn to for good solutions. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting challenge and it throws up a number of issues for us for us all in Budapest. Um, um, I don't know if there is any question. If, if there are any questions in the room, um, there is maybe time just for one question because we are uh, late, running late, and we have a very tight program. Um, if, um, I mean, if we are um, realistic, then we, we say um, that we thank you 
for your time and your effort to be with us on Skype, um, this green solution <coughs> for this conference. And we hope that we can promise each other that we'll be in touch um, sooner or later personally as well, and we can carry on our partnership. Definitely. Thank you very much, uh, Zoltan, and success with uh, your conference. Thank you, and take care. Bye. Szóval ezzel köszönjük szépen a, a figyelmet. Egy kérdésre, egy nagyon gyors kérdésre, még visszaadnám a szót neked, jó? Amit a Gerhardnál nem tudtunk feltenni. One, one short question uh, about the relation uh, between your party and the... Uh, yeah, uh, one, one short question uh, about your party, uh, the, the relation between your party and the green NGOs. How uh, can you cooperate... Uh, Is it, a, is it a smooth cooper, uh, cooperation? Because in Hungary, uh, we often um, realize that it's a problem uh, that uh, NGOs keep a big distance with uh, political parties. Thank you. Of course, the, the, the distance is, 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 is na it's natural and it's clear that there's some distance because the NGOs, they have to do lobbying for certain uh, aims that they have uh, and if they are too close to one party then it causes a problem to them if they have to deal let's say with governments uh, that are ruled by other parties so I mean we have we fully understand this this independence and, and the Greens have always respected this uh, But uh, given the contents, there are very often uh, campaigns where we support campaigns of NGOs or even uh, NGOs support campaigns of Greens. That's very easy in the field of environment. And there are, there are campaigns that are also supported by other parties like in the environmental against uh, GMOs, uh, for instance, or against nuclear power stations around Austria, etc. Even in some social uh, uh, issues, there are broad coalition. TTIP is one of, the, of, of these uh, 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 campaigns now uh, against this free trade agreement between uh, European Union and U USA. Uh, and of course in the traffic, uh, all those NGOs who are involved in, 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 in let's say, cycling or, or uh, sustainable traffic, etc., there is uh, close uh, cooperation. Uh, and some people from NGOs later on are candidates of Greens or even are become uh, green uh, mandatories, but then they lay down, of course, the function that they have in the NGO. For instance, our our president of the parliamentary group and our party spokesperson Eva Klavishnik, she comes from an NGO. She was in an NGO called Global 2000, which is part of the Friends of the Earth International. Uh, and uh, and she came to the Greens after her job in this environmental NGO. So actually there is, uh, there is uh, conflicts are, as I said, for instance in Vienna, if there are local civic initiatives uh, against uh, construction projects let's say construction of house blocks, yeah? then, or the, those who are in favor for, of monument protection, uh, that's always difficult if you have the planning department as a Greens uh, and are, are responsible for rezoning, etc. then there is sometimes conflict with local initiatives. So this is, we try to solve that, we try to, to, to find participation instruments, but that's not always easy. But with those NGOs who, who are active in, 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 in those uh, fields of politics where we all, uh, always advocate it, uh, I think there is, a, there is a positive dialogue and also the Greens, uh, which I also should mention uh, since 20, I think 25 years now, We have the so-called uh, fund for uh, for uh, for civic initiatives that is sponsored by by the by the salaries of green MPs from, from green MPs from Parliament, uh, and there are several hundred thousands of euro, I think 200 or 300 thousand euro every year uh, coming into this fund where uh, civic initiative can get some support. Uh, without being green or green members or so, but if they have uh, a campaign which is uh, in which is uh, compatible to green ideas, if they need some legal assistance, for instance, if a company is accusing them doing something, charging them, uh, so there uh, there is also some 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 funding uh, for certain projects. Thank you. <coughs>